r slash s credit. What did that one teacher at your school get fired for? My high school physics teacher had a small makeshift cannon PVC pipe that he used to demonstrate being fucking awesome physics. Basically he would wad up some paper towels, douse them with lighter fluid, cram them in the cannon, and light it off. Since he did this inside and didn't want to set the school on fire he did the sensible thing, have a student hold a metal bucket to catch the flaming projectile. Shockingly, he did this demonstration for years, reliably hit the bucket, and didn't have any issue. Until the year before I got there, and he ever so slightly set a student on fire. Basically he missed the bucket and hit the student in the chest, causing him to be just a little bit on fire until the flames were patted out. Student goes home with a scorched shirt. Parents flip wig, teacher comes this close to being fired, but instead is expressly forbidden from doing any demonstration of anything whatsoever. My luck turned around in my graduating year, when he decided he'd had enough bullshit, quit, and spent his last day showing us every demonstration he was otherwise banned from doing, including the cannon. It was a fun day. That one teacher was Mr. M. He was our 6th grade science teacher, and everyone loved him. He was a firm but fair teacher that made sure we all understood the material and even made learning 6th grade science material surprisingly enjoyable. Every Friday, he'd wear silly bright red shoes, and for birthdays, he would take a photo with the birthday kid with him standing on his head on their desk. Like I said, this guy was great. During one lesson, when I was in 8th grade, a student dropped a thermometer on the floor, broke it, and spilled a very tiny amount of mercury on the floor. Mr. M cleaned it up, but apparently not the right way, according to the administration. Once they caught wind of the story, he was forced to leave for apparently putting kids in danger, even though that amount of mercury would not even be close to dangerous. Everyone was crushed. A ton of students all banded together to buy him a new pair of red shoes. Last I heard from him, he got a great job in another school in the state, where he's loved by the students there too, so that's good. I'm friends on Facebook with him, I should ask him about what's new when I can. Edit, I asked some people, not Mr. M, and it turns out it was because he didn't report the spill to the administration, not just because he didn't clean it up correctly. Still shitty, but I figured I should clarify. Being a sex offender and not disclosing it to the board of education. Surprise, getting caught with 50 gigs of child porn will destroy your coaching career, girls volleyball, basketball, and assisting with gymnastics. Edit, RIP. My inbox. Some backstory, he went through a criminal investigation for what was found on his computer and never told the school board what it was over. After he had to register he never told the school, and since our school was aching for athletic personnel, no one asked. The teacher also had tenure, it wasn't until that he came invisibly drunk that the school dismissed him, but by that time several complaints had been filed about lewd comments he had made at the 6th grade females in the school. After firing him, a police officer came by to advise us that a week prior he had been charged for the child porn and was a registered sex offender. There was a lot of shit the school got for letting him work for a week. Apparently he went on vacation during his court proceedings and kept it under wraps so he wouldn't lose his job. One of students was a son of the director slash head of the board. I caught him cheating on my final exam. It was a definition question, and I found the edit web page where he copied the exact answer. I, of course, gave him an F at the end of that semester. Like a week later, I was told to leave. He passed my class with a C without my approval. Edit. Just to clarify the situation, I saw him using his phone. I didn't tell him that. I just asked why he was looking under the desk. He said he was playing with his phone followed by arguing that it's not against the rule to do so. The question was to define velocity. It's easy enough that you can phrase in your own words. Less than five words. He wrote three sentences, which was too good slash detailed for a guy who doesn't even bother to memorize F equals MA. The definition was copied from the textbook. It was copied from one of the first Google results. 
The kid was known to do such things by the students and the teachers. Other students didn't give a shit about him, and most teachers didn't want to deal with him. I didn't care to argue with them. Did you get mad? Nah, it was such a shit show that I was gonna quit after the first year or two. I taught seven different classes with zero help from my mentors. In fact, one of them screamed at me in front of my students for giving her son a C on a quiz. I was extremely stressed out that I actually felt relieved. One of my former students later told me that the school went downhill so fast after I left. Not because of me, of course, but a bunch of teachers were also let go, and most of the talented students moved to different schools. Also, when I was let go, some teachers wrote fantastic recommendation letters, and most of students told me and made videos to show how much they miss me. It's been 5 years, but I still keep in touch with some of them. <laughs> Harboring an escaped prisoner from another state. Edit the story. Her name was Miss V mid 30s, mousy brown hair, and the biggest kindest personality. She moved to my small town the summer before my senior year and got a job as a Spanish teacher at my little high school. She was from Kentucky, which is several states away from us, and her family still live there. She used to let me drive to get fast food breakfast during first period as long as I picked up something for her. She didn't mind me taking smoke breaks as long as I didn't snitch when she lit up in the stairwell. She was awesome. I had her first semester for Spanish 2, which I aced, and second semester for Spanish 3. Mid-semester, she comes to class a little late one morning and tells us the deal. Her uncle had escaped federal custody in Kentucky and had fled. He wound up at her house, where she took him in. He's family, she said. Johnny Law comes to her house asking about him, and she denies. They leave, but monitor her and her place for a bit. They deduce his whereabouts and contact her again, letting her know that harboring a fugitive is a serious offense. She denies again. They leave while the warrant machine starts turning. She comes to school to find, if memory serves, deputy US marshals in the administrative office. She knows what's up and she comes to class to brief us. She even asks if we have any questions. Got, she was cool. A few minutes later, our principal, accompanied by our friendly school resource officer, knocks on the door and asks to speak with her for a moment and to grab her purse. Through tears, she tells us goodbye and that she's enjoyed being our teacher and wishing us luck in life. That was the last we saw of her. A friend claimed to have seen her being escorted out in handcuffs. Her house was vacant the next day, her car disappeared. We were forbidden to discuss anything she'd shared with us in class, which means everyone knew about it immediately. We had a substitute the rest of the year. Edit 2, Electric Boogaloo. Okay, you guys demanded it, so I put my internet detective hat on, and I may have found her. I can't find any pictures, so I can't be 100% sure this is her, but it's not good, folks. Looks like she didn't do much time for the harboring charge. However, that set her on an ugly road. About 10 years later, she was arrested on charges of organized crime, drug distribution and conspiracy. Hillbilly heroin. Man, I hope it's not her, because it gets worse from there, but I can't say any more without darksxing. So basically, thanks for making me get sad, you beautiful bastards. He knocked up my high school girlfriend while she was 17 and I was in my first year of college. Still wonder how things would have turned out if that didn't happen. Edit, I should probably clarify a few things. I graduated HS in 2009, 2005. Christ I edited my typo over 45 minutes ago and I'm still getting messages about it. I appreciate the kind words, but I'm 28 now and quite over it. I jumped into a relationship right after this girl, with one that was the polar opposite in every way, after a few years, that ended up not working out due to the fact that I realized that there were qualities about the HSGF that I actually liked, cheating aside. Then I was single for about a year, 2009, before I randomly started texting with HSGF. HSGF and I had casual sex, 
My only experience with non-committed relationship 6. For about a year and a half, I started to develop feelings again. She was forthright about regretting what she did because she lost me, etc. I pulled out of the situation, no pun intended, because I knew that I could never trust her completely. Then I was single for another few years. Now I've been in a great relationship for about 3 years. But I still sometimes wonder how things would have happened with HSGF had we met, like we did the second time, and had a clean slate. I still have warm memories from time to time, but I love my current GF to death, and wouldn't throw what I have with her away for anything. I think it's human to look back and wonder about other people, it's when you pursue things that it's wrong, I think. We had an awesome math teacher in year 8. He was quite a big guy and brutally honest, but he'd tell us fun stories of his youth after a test or tedious assignment in order to calm us down. One kid, however, was never calm. Peter always had to be the center of attention, boasting about his skills and achievements. This time, he was bragging about how he had so easily achieved his recent black belt in martial arts. This got our teacher into a story about how he too had achieved his black belt sometime during his late teens. Before he could finish his tale, Peter stood on top of his chair and abruptly said I bet I am better than you. Our teacher gave a somewhat sympathetic laugh and attempted to finish what he was saying, only to be rudely interrupted again. Peter was at our teacher's desk now, challenging him to a black belt dual kid was a UGR fanatic. Again, our teacher laughed before telling him no and to sit down. Peter refused and got into stance. With a dry smile on his face, our teacher stood up. Peter prepared to do one of those high kicks, only to have his leg held in the air by our teacher. The thing is, Peter was an idiot and attempted to kick with the other leg. He was entirely afloat for one short moment before his second leg was held in place. With both legs off the ground, his top half slammed onto the floor, with his shoulder and head hitting the radiator behind him. Like a toddler, Peter began wailing. He roared obscenities and vowed that his parents would sue. Despite the fact that our teacher didn't hit Peter, merely acted more in a defensive manner, he was fired, though as far as I know, he was never sued. A couple of months later, Peter moved to another school and we were stuck with a number of substitute teachers until the end of the year. It just wasn't the same. My teacher didn't really get fired, but it's a pretty decent story nonetheless. We had this physics teacher who was a little weird. He liked to tell us stories about how he would be a huge jerk to his friends. He liked to make them vomit while he would fly them in his clean. He once gave us the silent treatment because we didn't do that well on a test to consecutive class periods where he refused to talk to us. So the last day before winter break, he's there, business as usual. When we get back, he's not there that first day, but we don't think anything of it. He must be sick or something. Day 2, same deal. Still normal. Day 3, we are concerned. By the next week, we know something's up. He ends up being gone for 6 weeks. And since he doesn't tell the school when he's coming back, they're stuck in this weird spot where they can't get us as sub that actually knows physics. So we literally do nothing for 6 weeks. It got to the point where the sub, who was some regular old sub who was with us pretty much every day, would hand us the work we had, and when we were like, do you really think we are doing this we would laugh, and she'd laugh with us. We ended up being exempt from taking the midterm. This all worked out in my favor, since before he disappeared I was on the verge of failing, but the quarter never ended up being counted due to his disappearance. So the school finally gets us a semi-permanent physics sub who knows what she's doing. The following Monday, this guy pops up, as if he knew he was being replaced. He started acting erratically, he would always close his door, as if someone were watching him, he was generally suspicious, he got into a screaming match with one of my classmates. Then, after about a week or two like this, he's gone again, replaced by the semi-permanent sub, never to be seen again. Now, there's a new young hot physics teacher this year, and I'm annoyed that I got the cook instead of the new lady, and none of the teachers know where he went either. It's like he just went completely off the grid. During the spring the girl's phys ed teacher was away one day. 
the sub decided it would be a good idea to take the girls out for a run, while us boys fumbled around with balls like the idiot 8th graders we were. After a lengthy game of basketball, the girls class made it back from their run. Now, I need to explain here that from the front doors, where they came in, you had to walk right past the office to the gym doors. The office has a big glass window, right into the principal's office. There was one right next to it, that the secretary could see through as well. To our pubescent, hormone-fueled minds, the best thing that could have possibly happened on that run, happened. There was a fairly large-sized fountain on the route that the girls took, and in the spring heat at a balmy 28 degrees Celsius, the girls were understandably quite tired and wanting to cool off after jogging for the better part of an hour. So they asked the sub if they could jump in the fountain. Of course, he let them. And they came back into the school still soaking wet, walking right past the office, into the gym, parading past the boys making noise to get their attention. All of us stopped playing and had to stare. The girls gym uniform was a fairly thin white t-shirt with the school logo and a fairly nice fitting pair of what were basically boy shorts. It was a good day to be in that class and that sub went down in history as the best sub ever. Unfortunately he was banned from teaching for at least two years as far as I know, but from the principal's reaction and the following announcement the next day, I doubt he was allowed to teach Phi Z again. Not a teacher but a janitor. You know the kind. Kinda creepy. Doesn't really talk to you. Looks a little weird. But, you want to have hope that they're actually swell. Well, this guy was one of those. One day, he wasn't there. A couple other kids and I noticed he wasn't at the front office. We didn't think much of it. But, the next day he didn't show up either. This mysterious vibe hung around for about a week and a half. Till one kid said he knew where he went. To jail. Why? No one knew. Yet. Discussion creeped from the cafeteria to the classroom. Brought up through hushed whispers, which grew to loud questions which the teachers avoided. Till the principal came on the loudspeaker one day, to address it head on. He had killed someone. All the details were spotty, but he had killed someone, and he left it at that. We didn't know whether it was murder, manslaughter, or just self-defense, but as elementary school students, it was such a year-changing event. Toads cray cray. <laughs> Not my teacher, but my sisters, while we were both in high school. So this Spanish teacher that my sister had was one of those teachers that never really taught anything, yet she managed to yell the entire class period. From what I was told the teacher would even have each individual class change the formation of the desk depending on the class, every day, thus wasting about 15 to 20 minutes. So one day after class, my sister is talking with her friends and they were all complaining about the teacher and my sister told them she could get her fired. Now my family knew the superintendent at the time so, if we had a problem with any of the staff we could just go and talk to him, and we knew we had this power but rarely ever used it. My sister decided to use it. So they send someone to monitor the teacher while she teaches. My sister's class didn't have a monitor cause they left to go to a meeting and the teacher loses it and question and accusing students of telling their parents and getting administration to watch her. Everyone in the class knew it was my sister, but they all had her back and kept their mouths shut two weeks later. The teacher is gone and all of her friends were like oh my gosh you really did get her fired. Little did they know at the time, the teacher actually left because she had cancer and decided to take leave. They found out a few months later after the teacher had died from cancer. So for the next few years her group of friends saw her as a sort of bringer of death. In junior high, I was just starting to get interested in computers. This new school I came to had a computer lab. And I could even have a whole class of using the computer, not just for extracurricular time, if I picked computer class when forming my school schedule at the beginning of the year. I was so damn excited. It was the second day of school when I met Mr. V. The classroom was set up in a way that when you walked in the room you had to pass by Mr. V's desk. He had a bagel shaped desk I remember. You couldn't walk up behind him, you would have to walk around the desk, past the filing cabinets and another table, towards the back wall of the class. This was done on purpose, 
so kids couldn't walk behind his desk. I didn't think anything of it, I just figured it's because it's a computer lab and he had expensive stuff he didn't want kids messing with back there. Halfway through the year Mr. V gets a visit one day I'm in class. I turned around and saw the principal and assistant principal standing in the doorway to the room. From my angle I saw two policemen standing a little behind the principals. I stopped what I was doing to watch as Mr. V, pen as a ghost, gets escorted out of the room. The assistant principal told us all to finish our assignments and that Mr. V's car may have been hid in the teacher's parking lot and he had to leave. Then Mr. V never came back to school to teach. Thought nothing of it until one of the kids in school found his picture on the internet from a news website. Arrested for distribution of child pornography. He was your typical pedophile. Glasses. Creepy pedo smile. Mustache. I didn't know people like that existed and couldn't grasp what had actually happened until years later. He said he'd never tell. Oh, I think I got this one down pat, guys. For context, in 7th grade, I was at a special school for people who were struggling with regular schools. My 6th grade was especially crappy, I had just moved and was dealing with anxiety slash depression. There were two main teachers at the start of the year. I forget the name of both, but I know this much, by the end of the year, one got fired for what she did to me. Basically, to make a long story short, I was struggling with math and one of the teachers was helping me. However, I still wasn't grasping it. Eventually, this girl lost it. She literally began to yell at my face and insult me, telling me how I'd never amount to anything in my life, calling me an idiot, stuff like that. Keep in mind she's at a school that's for helping people that are struggling with regular schools, and I had depression and anxiety at the time. Naturally, I was pissed about this, as well as extremely hurt. I don't know any of the background stuff, but I do know this, she was fired for that. I only saw her one more time, like a week later, and I didn't approach her. I was still bitter at what she did, and didn't want to see her ever again. And if the fact I started doing online school starting with 8th grade says anything, I never will be seeing her ever again. Good riddance. My internship professor in grad school got fired for being a terrible educator and a person. First year teaching us, and it was horrible. She made a girl cry, she was never able to tell us for some reason what the class requirements were, we had to learn from other classmates slash professors in our department. She made and encouraged fights between students, not debates. She picked on everyone, called me stupid. We all were scrambling to get out of her class by the end of fall. Only one did, since she had been fired and her supervisor was a known asshole, and it was really bad for her. Everyone else was told nothing could be done, etc. Second semester is just as horrific. Same shit. She got fired just before the end of the year and ended up giving us the same grade for the first semester. She also started asking us for stupid summaries of the textbook, which none of the other classes did. Worst that semester was that she started arbitrarily asking for stuff single spaced as opposed to double spaced for readability. Our last paper was supposed to be APA format, 10 PGS, double spaced. But no, she asked us to make it single spaced, which turned my 10 PG paper into a 6.5 PG one. I was probably the most livid I'd ever been in my entire life. My hand shook, I was so pissed. I knew some of the girls later handed their papers in shorter than 10 PGS. Only at the time, I had no idea what arbitrary shit she was gonna pull. So I spent extra time adding god only knows to make it back to 10 PGS. I was enraged by then. So that's why she was fired. I had a college professor in my undergrad be fired for similar shit. Only he was nice and class was fun. Only we didn't learn shit. A few of us in that major, myself included, spoke to the higher ups over it. We basically wanted to learn in this class, being that we needed this info, had it been an elective or something, we wouldn't have cared as much. Also his tests were never about the material we learned in class, so you never studied the right stuff. Well he did not get fired, but it was a catholic school in Germany, where you get fired instantly for being lesbian, but not for what this fucknut did. 
He was probably over 60 years old and religious to the core. He had a daughter with Down syndrome which he always called God's punishment because he got drunk on wine once. He ate old chewing gum from under a table because God told him it was okay to do. He jumped out of a first floor window and ran around the school because he saw the devil coming in. No one else did but hey. He cleaned the huge McDonald's parking lot all by himself because the Holy Mary told him to. He slapped children just straight up refused to teach certain children because they were possessed, because they forgot their Bible, or because the cross in the room was missing, or at an angle, or whatever. He actually did not teach most of the time, but played weird songs on his flute. No one got what that was about, or told really bad jokes, or just told everyone that he went to the church yesterday, go figure. His final grades were completely based on the number of times you said God or hearing is the key to success. I kid you not he had a tally sheet to mark how often people said these words and bam, that was your grade. Once I had to get my grades up, so I just told him his key sentences around 30 times in a row and bam a. Eh? We would sometimes call him pretending to be God and told him not to come to school the next day. He then would not come but this was not really a permanent solution because he would start asking us what to do with his wife or daughter and it got so sad. He taught religion, big surprise, and German and both were essentially just religion, which was essentially flute soloing for hours without end. I'm not gonna lie most of the time it was funny as all hell, but sometimes it got so weird that we just questioned where the fuck we were and how we deserved it. Oh and btw this was only the shit I know about because he did this in my classes, there is probably a boatload more. Thank you so much for watching the whole video. Please leave a like and subscribe.